So I have had the opportunity to meet and talk with this gentleman a couple of times. And unfortunately, our recording software did not capture the previous conversations, but I'm hoping that this time it does and it sticks because guys, this guy is on fire and I don't say that about everybody. So you will see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So Ellison Wang is an email copywriter, author, and publisher of How to Become an Email Titan. I know, right? You want that book. So do I. I know. Okay. So he publishes daily copywriting, email marketing, and business tips on his blog, So you know why he's here, right? He's going to give us all of this juicy, good stuff as it relates to email marketing. He has helped many, many clients in many different industries, including nonprofits, startups, e-commerce businesses, real estate, and even tech companies to write engaging sales emails that their subscribers really look forward to to reading. Now, we just had a conversation not that long ago with a digital marketing agency who talked about money being in your email list. There is money. Your email list contains gold. And Ellison is going to share with us some tips and tricks today to help us tap that gold mine so that we can start to see that revenue produce inside of our business. So without further ado, Ellison, thanks so much for joining us today. Yes. Hi, Terry. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here. You are welcome. I'm excited to have you. Um, I know that email marketing in this crazy world that we live in is one of the best ways to engage and stay top of mind for our warm relationships. So why did you get into email marketing? I think that's a great place to start. Like what about it really lights your fire and makes you excited? Yeah. um, So let's see. I think, uh, I mean, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how far back I should go. I think uh, it all started when I um, first started my blog. And that blog had to do with, uh, you know, teaching people how to uh, build their own computers and how to improve uh, in gaming. So those are two of my life passions. So I decided to do my first online venture on that, right? And that blog lasted for about a year. It's still up, but it's just, I just like actively worked on it for a year. And during that time, I learned, you know, a lot of other skills, including copywriting, SEO, um, social media ads and things like that. And when I hit that one year mark, I uh, kind of decided to uh, to pretty much jump ship, um, and I wanted to do copywriting instead. And it's not necessarily because um, you know I found an interest in marketing, but it's more of because you know of all the writing and stuff. I kind of found a passion in that. Mm. So yeah, so I decided to do copywriting just because I found writing pretty fun. And the thing about email is that uh, it's very uh, casual by nature, meaning you can be, you can basically be yourself when you write. You can, you know, just full on, just put in your full personality and things like that. And, you know, it's very friendly. Um, So those things, you know, it makes it, you know, even more fun to write. Sure. Right? Um, and yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons why I uh, got into email copywriting. Um, and it's also because, you know, part of it is also because, uh, you know, I'm building I'm building a, a relationship with the person I'm talking to. And uh, yeah, and that, you know, just last year. I kind of realized how important it is to build relationships with other people. Uh, So that aspect is also really fun for me. Interesting. So where, why is there so much value for you in building relationships with other people? I know that 
you know, aside the human, human element and the human condition of needing other people for us to feel happy and us to feel fulfilled. What is it for you about the human relationship? That's so interesting. Oh, that's a good question. Um, Sorry for the trick question today. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I thought it's it was good. only going to be about thinking. email marketing. Trick, yeah, no. <laughs> um, what is it about relationships that, that I really like? I think it's, I think one of the things is that, um, it's really how I, how I add to other people's lives. Mm. Um, and like, I've seen examples in some of my uh, personal friendships where I kind of help them uh, influence in a good way and then to help them grow, to become like a much better person. And I think that is a, that's really, it's a good feeling to see, like to see someone grow because of like what you, uh, uh, oh my God, what you like, oh my God, I can't even talk today. What you brought into their life, basically, right? Sure. And, um, And I think for business, it's the same way where, you can help, uh, you know, add value to other people's businesses as well with your insights and, um, you know, your skills and things like that. So I think that would be the main reason. Well, so there's a lot of ways to communicate that, though, and build that relationship. And you chose email, which is really interesting to me, because being in the marketing space, you hear all the time how impersonal email can feel. So it's really interesting that that that's the avenue you chose to build that relationship. How have you figured out a way to bridge that that gap from it being this like impersonal kind of digital thing to something that really actually does help you build those deeper, stronger relationships with your email audience? Yeah. Uh, the main way I do it is... Uh, I basically, so like you mentioned before, like I, in my emails, I always try to share, you know, a copywriting tip, email marketing tip. Um, But I combine that with uh, stories from uh, pretty much from my personal life. So, you know, I would tell a story about something that happened to me the other day or, uh, like a thought I had, a random thought I had, and I just go into that. Um, And then I uh, just tie it into that tip and, you know, that thing that I want to teach them. Mm. Um, So they do get educational value out of it, like marketing um, insights. Um, But they also learn more about me personally, you know, Um, and that kind of creates you know, that relationship that's, that goes beyond just like a business relationship, you know? So then it kind of feels like that person that's reading the email kind of knows me as a person, you know, even though they've never, you know, spoken to me face to face. Mm. That's very Seth Godin of you, by the way, to find something in your environment or something in your day that you're like, Hmm, I wonder from a marketing perspective, if we X, Y, and Z with this, where it could go. So that's really awesome. Are you a Seth Godin fan? Uh, I have browsed his website maybe like once or twice, but I've never actually, I've, uh, you know, dove into his work before. Sure. Uh, so I can't say. <laughs> Really That's say. it's like he he is always thinking outside the box. Like he's always looking at things that we've always done, and he's the guy who's going to question, like, well, why do we always do it that way? And it sounds like you have a very mm-hmm. similar approach. So when it comes to email marketing, I think one of the biggest questions that we hear all the time is, okay, so gold is in my email list. I don't have an email list. So how do I get an email mm-hmm. list? 
Ooh. Uh, yeah, there are, there are many ways to do it. Um, I mean, if I can just list a couple of examples. Yeah. Um, uh, so the first way, which is probably the fastest way, is uh, social media ads, which does cost money. Um, you know, th the good thing about that is that, uh, especially for platforms like Facebook, where the targeting is so complex, you can target, you know, pretty much anyone you want. And I've heard stories where somebody uh, tries to set up the targeting uh, preferences where they try to go for a specific person. And then in that ad, it would have that person's name on it. So when the person sees it, it's just going to be like, I mean, it's going to be creepy, first of all, but <laughs> it's going to get that person's attention. <laughs> It sure so that's will how be far, creepy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how far you can go with it. Um, so yeah, you can be very specific uh, on who you want to target, and you'll get leads pretty fast, really. Um, like I've had when I read my blog, I did a Facebook ad where, uh, if anyone's familiar with it, the metric they use is lead per. Cost per lead, cost per lead. So my ad was performing at about, I think it was around 50 cents to 75 cents per lead, mm. which is amazing, which is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And my email list grew very fast. Yeah. I was going to say, I've never had a cost per lead be that low. Um, yeah. And I think. Is it, is it the higher, the more specific the targeting, the more expensive the lead is? Or is it the more specific the targeting, the less expensive the lead is? Uh, the more specific, uh, the less expensive, I believe. I always think of it backwards. Whichever it is, I always think of it the other way. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, like, the more specific you are... Um, Assuming that, you know, it fits the person you're targeting, uh, they're more likely to opt in. Yeah. And if, let's say, if uh, somebody clicks on your ad link, but then they don't opt in, it still costs you money. Right. So if they, you know, click and then opt in, um, you know, you won't have that wasted money, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So the good thing is you can build your email list fast. The bad news is, from my experience, is that you might not get the most responsive people, meaning people might just opt into your email list just to get that free resource, but then they'll never open a single email you send them afterwards. So that's so an interesting that point too. Um, when you're building your email list, not only is it useful to leverage digital advertising to do that, but to have something appealing for them to want to give you your, their email so that they can get access to something, whether it be an yeah. ebook or some, some nugget of information that you're willing to give them that's super valuable in their mind, uh, that's mm -hmm. going to make them more interested in actually giving you their email address as opposed yes. to, you know, hey, subscribe to my newsletter. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want another <laughs> newsletter in my inbox. But I will sign up for a course on how to get more speaking engagements, or I'll sign up for a course on neurolinguistic programming or something like that that's going to help me better my career and better my work for my clients. So something to think about. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you were saying something else, and I just wanted to like <laughs> highlight that. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so uh, I left off with, um, yeah, they might opt into your email list, but then they might not be the most responsive, meaning they, you know, they probably won't open a single email that you send them afterwards, which is, uh, you know, which can get kind of irritating at times, but that's where, you know, you got to like clean out your email list and stuff like that, like, just take out the dead readers, basically. Mm -hmm. um, How often do so, you do that? 
Uh, I do it maybe once every three months. Oh wow! Once okay. every three months. Yeah. Once a quarter. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, obviously you can do the organic way. You know, there's、uh, creating articles and blog posts and then、uh, optimizing it for、uh, you know SEO purposes.、Um, like I just checked the metrics of my old blog that I haven't touched in I think a year now, and the website brought in maybe like I think it was twenty new leads last month. Which was great to see, but I don't work on their project anymore, so it's like、uh, it, it doesn't really matter.、Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that it still works to this day is、um, that's that's amazing. That's、yeah. amazing. Like when、um, you do search engine optimization, it is worth noting that the organic flow, like what you're talking about, Ellison, is search engine optimization. And when we when we're creating good Um, search engine optimized content.、Uh, it's not something that gets created once and it's good for a day and then it's gone. I mean, if it's written well and it's optimized well, it has a longevity to it for for many many months or even years to come. Now, is that the case for every piece of optimized content? No, but it is the case for some content. Can have some longevity to it, so that's the value of having a search engine optimization person assist with creating some of that content and doing some of the research required for getting the most effective phrases that your audience might be searching for, because that's going to help you really continue to to build a list and generate some revenue long after the work is done, like the the.、Yeah. Case with you with that website you haven't touched in like a year. It's still generating leads for you, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah,、um, yeah. It really is, and yeah. So that's that's another way.、Um, and the third way, which、um, it's basically you provide a service in exchange for the other person to promote you to their email list. So people on their email list can go to your email list. So it's kind of like a bartering kind of thing, where、uh, instead of you know、um, doing your service for you know money, you do it for new leads, which can sometimes be a lot more valuable than the money itself.、Mm. You know,、um, so those are the those are three ways、yeah. that that I have like in my mind right now. So to recap, the question, the initial question was, how do you build an email list? Since we know there's gold in our email list, how do we build an email list? And the three tips that Ellison just gave is one: you can run some Facebook ads targeting a specific person and offering them something that you know they can't live without. That they're going to want to give up that email address for. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is doing some organic、uh, content creation within your website that's going to help you gain some visibility and credibility with Google, so that you can start to attract the eyeballs on your site. Once they're on your website, they see the value that that you bring to the table. They're going to want to give you. Their email address so that they can get more of your genius in their inbox, and then three. Oh, Ellison, I just forgot number three. Oh, the third one was uh, uh, giving your service in exchange for the person to promote you. Yeah. Oh, I love this、list. one. This one is like a cross promotion. Okay, so. This even helps from an SEO perspective as well. So we talk about this in search engine optimization, where you go be a guest blogger on somebody else's website. You're getting exposure、mm-hmm. into their audience. <clears throat> It works for podcasts as well. You go be on somebody else's podcast, and you get an opportunity to generate new listeners to your podcast, and vice versa. It's the same concept, only in this regard, it's an email. So we we've seen the social media takeovers. 
you can do an email takeover where you're going to get exposure to somebody else's audience and have an opportunity to sell your product or service. And here's the thing too, you want to make sure that you're adding value when you do that, not just selling something. And uh, it's a way to attract some audience members to your, to your list. Those are great tips, Ellison. Thank you. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So once they're on your list, I know everybody has a frequency thing of like, how frequently should they be emailing? It's different for everybody in every industry. You're pretty unique though. So tell us your recommendation for frequency of emailing. Yeah, for me, uh, I email, I email every day. Um, I used to do it seven days a week. Now I do it five days a week. Um, yeah, just to like, just to give myself a break, you know, because it does get kind of tiring at times. <laughs> um, but yeah, the power of daily contact, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible because, you know, when you get, you know, when you get an email from someone, it's, it's kind of easy to forget that you're on their list. So <laughs> for someone in my experience, there are people who email me once a week. And it's, uh, you know, more times than not, I kind of forget that I'm still on their email list. So when I get their email, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm still on that person's list, right? Uh, um, but then there are people who email me every day. And uh, that's very different because when you email every day, you're pretty much going to be in front of your reader's mind, you know, every day, you know? And um, yeah, when they're constantly thinking about you and your business, your products and services, you know, and when they need to solve a problem that your product or service, you know, can solve, the first person they're going to think about is you. Cause you have that daily contact. Mm -hmm. um, you're always in front of their mind and yeah. And then, you know, obviously the more daily, the more contact, uh, the, uh, the faster you build the relationship with the other person as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's why I, uh, I advocate daily emailing. So if we're emailing every day, that seems like, mm -hmm a lot of work and we're talking about business owners who already wear a lot of different hats. Is there mm -hmm. a way or a tip that you might be able to give people for coming up with what the heck should they be saying? Cause they've got to be coming up with something that's of value to email every day. Otherwise they're going to hit people's inboxes and they're going to be like, ah, oh, here's this joker again. And they're going to delete it instead <laughs> of engage with it. Right. So is there a tip you can give our audience about like how to make that email content valuable and consistent like that? Um, hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So first of all, like you don't want to make your emails, you know, boring, right? Like you don't want to, um, you don't want it to be like a pure sales pitch. Uh, like you want it to be something that they want to be able to read and uh, have fun with reading, you know? Um, and I think one of the tips I can give is write about something that, uh, that you have fun writing about. Cause if you have fun writing it, then your audience is going to have fun reading it. Right. Um, but then when you come up with, when you have to write an email every day, you know, you have to, uh, you have to have a lot of ideas in mind, right? Um, that was one of the, I think that was one of the fears that I had, you know, when I um, thought about going from emailing weekly to emailing daily, it's like, how am I going to keep up with the ideas? And I think one of the biggest tips that helped me was uh, put aside maybe 20 minutes each day 
to just sit, do nothing. I just think about three ideas, three email ideas, and then write them down on a document. And then if you do that every day, then you're pretty much going to have, you know, an almost unlimited amount of ideas. You like, you never going to have to worry about running out of ideas, basically. Mm. Um, and yeah. And then, like I said before, like you want to tell, you want to tell a story in the emails because naturally stories are, um, they're naturally engaging, you know, it's just where our brains are just built that way. Right. Can you give um, us an example? An example? Yeah. yeah. Like a past email that I wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. So uh, one of the, I'm trying to think of one that I wrote recently that I had fun doing. Um, oh, okay. So there was an email that I wrote a few days ago where I kind of, I kind of ranted about how, uh, I kind of ranted about the, the beauty standard Mm -hmm. and how it's very unrealistic. Um, cause there are celebrities, um, especially in the Korean pop industry, they, uh, where plastic surgery is very common. So the way that they look is just not possible for you to attain naturally. And people kind of compare themselves to that. Mm -hmm. And then they, it's just a lot of unnecessary stress built up inside of them. And then that kind of goes for the people in social media who compare themselves to the people they see online. And like we all know, the social media, it only shows you the highlight of a person's life and not everything. And um, yeah, and then when they compare themselves to that, it kind of becomes, it kind of becomes a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. And basically I told that story. And then I, uh, I honestly don't remember how I tied it into the tip that I wrote. I really don't remember. Um, but yeah, I remember when I sent out that email and I checked my inbox the next day, I, um, I got some pretty good engagement from it. Like people emailed me saying like, oh yes, this is, this is absolutely true. They, you know, they pretty much agree with it, which is, which is good. Like this is, those are the types of people that I, uh, I want to keep around basically. I want to highlight too, because you you gave a really great way to come up with the ideas of what to write. And it's basically a brain dump exercise where you take just 20 minutes of day and let that be quiet time. Don't have anything else open on your computer, shut the notifications off on your phone, make it silent, lock yourself in a quiet space and just give yourself that 20 minutes to think about what are three things that are in my industry that I could talk about that somebody would need to know or that somebody might want to know? Somebody might be looking for this information. And if you could just brain dump those three things, you're not writing the emails, you're just writing the ideas down every day. That's going to yeah. give you an ongoing running list of things that you could write about. And there are a ton of email automation systems out there. Uh, I love using email automation for a lot of things like birthday reminders or anniversaries or inviting people to events. Things like that can be done through automation. Um, Mm -hmm. And and even your daily emails, if you're going to go to a daily email concept, if you take the time on a weekend and say you write all five of your emails on Saturday for the following week, Well, it's still relevant. It's still current to what's happening right now. And you've taken it off of your agenda for during the work week. So it's not going to interfere with your day-to-day operations. Mm -hmm. Or you could always delegate it to somebody else in the office. If you have an office or a team of people, you could even say, okay, accounting, your job is to write an email once a week. Your job is to write it every Wednesday because Wednesdays are an easier day for accounting. And uh, warehouse, your job is to write an email about 
warehouse management or organization every Tuesday and shipping your job is to write every Monday and you have one department write an article every day or write an email every day. Now you're talking about all the different components inside of a supply chain or inside of a warehouse or manufacturing whatever your industry is, you have all the different departments writing something. So they're all having their own unique voice inside of the unique voice of your entire organization. Now it takes it off of your plate. As the business owner, you're not the one that's solely responsible for that. And your marketing department isn't solely responsible for it either because they have a lot on their plate that they're trying to keep track of. So that's another way that you can leverage team and leverage automation tools to help schedule out those emails. So you're not having to remember to do it every day. You're just having to remember to write the email. Is there a length? Yeah. Is there a length in email that's better or worse in terms of engagement that you found? Um, not necessarily. I, uh, I don't, for me, the length is not really something I'm worried about. Um, you know, sometimes they're very short. Like sometimes I keep it to like a hundred words. Some of them were maybe like 500 words. Um, but I typically keep them at around 300 words. Cause I know, I know people are busy, you know, they, they don't have time to read a whole novel, you know? Um, so for me personally, I, the uh, 300 words is like the sweet spot for me. And that's not much longer than a social media post, guys. So for those of you that are listening right now, let us know this content is what you need by liking, commenting, subscribing to our channel, sharing this with your friends, because this is super duper valuable stuff. Your email does not need to be long. It can be short, like 300 words, 200, 300 words. That's a social media post, guys. I mean, Twitter handles don't give you more than, what, 140 characters now? Um, that's like a sentence and a half. So <laughs> it's, that's super short. But LinkedIn gives you 200 words. So that can that's a decent size piece that you can write. And you can really elaborate a story in 200 words but still have it be super short and impactful. So that's really key. Ellison, what's going to be the best way for our audience to get in touch with you? We're not done talking yet, but I, I do want them to be able to reach out to you with additional questions they might have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can reach me on my website. It's uh, E-L-L-I-S-E-N-W-A-N-G.com. Um, and then from there uh, you can you know, find my email, which is on that address. And you can also opt into my email list. And when you do, I'll give you the uh, sample chapters of my book, How to Become an Email Titan. Um, and they're basically handpicked chapters to help you get started with um, email marketing from, from the very beginning. So basically like, uh, like building your email list, um, and, and the email copywriting portion as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. It's a great gift. So for those of you who are listening, make sure you go to ellisonwong.com and subscribe to his email list so that you can get those sneak peek chapters that are going to help you tap into the gold mine that can be your email list. Ellison, what's one thing you wish you knew when you were getting started in this whole digital marketing, email marketing, copywriting world that you're in now? Um, hmm. One thing I wish I knew. I think uh, if I had to pick one thing, it would have to be the fact that I... Um, the fact that when you're talking to an audience, it uh, the only thing that really matters is that they hear from you every single day. And you know, I wish I knew that because like uh, back then when I first started, I was like, 
I would stress about, you know, a lot of the little things like, you know, like I mentioned it before, like how long should an email be? Um, what's the best day to send it? What's the best time to send it? Um, but now I know that it really doesn't matter anymore. As long as your readers hear from you every single day, like, you know, that's really all that matters, really. Like, it doesn't matter if you send them an email at nine o'clock in the morning or 7 p.m. at night, which, which I do now, <laughs> um, just because of how my schedule is. Um, yeah, as long as you talk to them every single day, that's really all that matters. As long as you build a relationship, as long as you um, provide them with you know, mean, uh, like educational value and also entertainment value every single day, then, then yeah, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Allison, how many people do you have on your subscriber list right now? Just curious. Um, I, uh, so I did a cleaning mm -hmm. just recently. So I pretty much wiped out I don't even know, like a whole bunch of my subscribers. Um, right now, it's very small. Uh, I think it's only, I think it's like 83. It's very small. Um, mm. Just because of the fact that I kick out more people than I bring in. So I'm intentionally trying to keep it very tight. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, I've been doing it very slowly too. Like, as I stopped doing social media ads and just going the more organic route mm -hmm. only because it's um, like, I noticed that the subscribers that come from like the more organic way of list building, they're more responsive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just decided to do that okay. slow and steady. Yeah. Well, and that's what wins the race. So I appreciate yeah. your honesty and transparency there, but I also appreciate that you, you are using your own advice. You're saying, look, I want an engaged audience. I don't just want an audience who's willing to subscribe. I'm, I don't need a trillion subscribers. It, mm -hmm. This isn't a popularity contest. What I need is people who are going to open my emails, who are going to engage with my emails on a regular basis. So at the end of the day, you what this proves to our audience is you don't need a huge list to get started. You only need one to get started. And you don't need a huge list to generate revenue from it. You only need a few to generate revenue from it if you have the right list. So if you are a business owner who's sitting on an email list, maybe it's people write their email address on a notepad when they check out, or maybe you've been collecting business cards from networking events that you've gone to in years past, but you've never done anything with these email addresses. Now is a great time to reach out to those people, see if those email addresses are still good, update your list and have a more regular conversation with them. Get them used to seeing you in their inbox because it is, it is a relationship game. It is a top of mind game and being, being in an email system that you have people who are engaged with your content is going to make it so much more rewarding for you to keep doing the content. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you yeah. for, for walking the walk. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have any other um, tips, habits, or tools that you might recommend to somebody who's getting started in building their email list or is getting started in sending emails so that they can stay on it? Because an email a day is a lot. So how do they yeah. stay on it? Uh, I mean, I think for to stay consistent with it, it's... Uh, there's really no easy way around it except that you just have to do it every single day. Like that's, that's really it. <laughs> um, Are there uh, email systems that are better? I mean, cause we've got the MailChimp's and the active campaigns and the, you know, 
uh, HubSpots and all, all of these different email systems, the constant contacts. Is there one, yeah. an email system that you recommend or that you prefer over another and why? Um, I personally use, I use MailerLite. Mm. Uh, so I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a service where they, um, they give you like a thousand subscribers for free. Mm. It's kind of like MailChimp. Um, but for me, I use, uh, I use plain text emails. So as long as a service has that, I'm fine. Um, I don't really stress out about comparing the different services because to me, they all, they all pretty much function the same, you know, unless there's something that, that I don't know about. But as far as my knowledge goes, they all pretty much function the same. Okay. Um, yeah. Don't quote me on that, by the way. Have you found, <laughs> have you found that um, plain text emails are better than the HTML emails with the video and the photos and all of the graphics? Uh, I, um, hmm. Is that why you use, it's, I guess I'm trying to get to why, why do you do plain text email over all of the other options that are out there now? Uh, it's really because of the, it's really because of the simplicity, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's really because of the simplicity. Like I don't have to worry about the coding aspect. I just write what I need to write, send it. And, and that's it. Like it just saves time, you know? Um, well, that's yeah. what it's all about. Simplicity. I mean, shoot, make it as easy as possible. And honestly, if you're sending an email every day, you probably don't need to have all of the, the graphics and the video and all of that stuff in the email every day. By the way, if all of a sudden you're hearing heavy breathing, Ellison did not put me to sleep. It is my dog who's decided that laying next to me is good now and she is snoring. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to say that because I don't want my listening only audience to be like, wow, he like put her to sleep. No, he didn't. I'm good. <laughs> <I promise. laughs> oh, it's a trip. All right, Allison, what, one more time, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you to ask you more questions or maybe get your support in helping them create the perfect email? Yeah. So again, my website is ellisonwong.com. It's E L L. I S E N W A N G dot com. Uh, when you go there, you can opt in to get the free sample chapters of uh, how to become an email titan. Um, if not, you can just go to my uh, my blog where I post uh, pretty much the daily copywriting, email marketing tips. Um, so you can read those as well. So it's really up to you if you want to opt in or not. If, if not, it's okay. The blog is still there for you. You can still get value out of that. Uh, and if you do opt in, then welcome to, you know, my, uh, my little community, right? Yeah. And that's what it's all about, folks, is creating your own little community. Today has been chock full of great tips to help you grow your list, help you tap into the gold that's in your list and help you create some new ways of thinking about the content that you're sharing in your emails. Ellison, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Friends, those of you listening, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if this content is helping you to improve your marketing, improve your business, improve your life. I'm here as a platform to support you. So I want to hear from you. I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Thanks so much.